Hi, Dr. Wells. This is Lynn Gillespie from um, Paleo Gardening. How are you today? Oh, excellent. Dr. Terry Walls is a clinical professor of medicine at the University of Iowa, the author of The Walls Protocol, How I Beat Progressive MS Using Paleo Principles and Functional Medicine. So, Terry, how would you explain The Walls Protocol to anyone that's unfamiliar with your work? You know, it's really a comprehensive diet and lifestyle change that uh, helps people uh, shift to the most health-promoting choices uh, that we can make. And it's really based on uh, the latest science uh, and uh, my experience and my clinical experience as well. I've created a uh, very structured diet uh, to optimize uh, health for the brain and ourselves. And I give a lot of instruction on how to create a more optimized lifestyle for the same thing. Nice. Yeah, I've read the book, and it is very thorough, and it has already affected my health for the better, which is awesome. Yeah. Great. So uh, tell me about how you restored your health using the WALS protocol. So um, I am an academic general internal medicine doc uh, here at the University of Iowa. And in 2000, I was diagnosed with uh, multiple sclerosis. It was on the basis of a history of dim vision 13 years earlier, a new problem with weakness of my left leg. Uh, And I had a complete uh, evaluation, uh, which spanned several weeks, and included an MRI of my spinal cord uh, and brain, which showed lesions in the spinal cord. I had a spinal tap, which uh, had abnormal fluid. Uh, and so I was diagnosed with relapsing, remitting, multiple sclerosis. Now, I knew that within 10 years of diagnosis, uh, people newly diagnosed with MS, one half will be unable to work due to severe fatigue, and one third will have difficulty walking, needing a cane, walker, or wheelchair. Uh, and so I sought out uh, you know, really the most aggressive treatment that I could from uh, one of the leading MS centers in the country, which was the Cleveland Clinic. And so I saw their best people, took the newest drugs, and treated my disease very aggressively. Uh, And I had uh, one episode of weakness involving my uh, right arm. Uh, So if I'd been in a, and that was over the next three years, so if I'd been in a drug trial, that would have been counted as a huge success. But the problem was I was steadily declining, uh, and uh, in 2003, uh, my physicians told me it was time to get a to recline wheelchair because of severe fatigue and weakness of the uh, muscles in my belly and my back. And uh, at that time, uh, the disease had transitioned to secondary progressive MS. And in that phase of the disease, uh, there are no more spontaneous improvements. You can just expect a steady uh, decline. Um, So I took the chemotherapy, and then when it became available, I switched to Tizabri, uh, but continued to slowly decline. And that's when I started, uh, I decided that I needed to read the science myself. Uh, and I would begin experimenting based on what I was reading uh, in the animal models, the mouse and rat studies. And so I was adding some vitamins and supplements, and I slowed the speed of my decline, and, and I was very, very grateful for that. Uh, but I am still declining. By the summer of 2007, I am so weak I can no longer sit up in a regular chair. I have to be in a uh, a special kind of recliner called the zero gravity uh, where I was fully reclined with my knees higher than my nose. Uh, I had one at work, another one at home. I could walk very short distances using two canes or uh, two walking sticks, really. Uh, Otherwise, I uh, relied on that tilt recline wheelchair. I was beginning to have brain fog. Uh, It had severe fatigue. I was really exhausted by 10 in the morning. And uh, it was that summer I discovered the Institute for Functional Medicine. And I took their course on neuroprotection and had, after that, a much longer list of vitamins and supplements that I was taking. And and actually, I'll back up for a moment uh, in that, you know, in 2002, when I was still walking, my neurology doc had told me about Lauren Cordain's work, and oh. I had uh, read his book, uh, read uh, the papers, 
and decided that he had uh, a reasonable scientific rationale. And so after 20 years of being a vegetarian, I uh, went back to eating meat. And that, that was a, a very big uh, decision for me. But I'd still declined, and for the next five years, I would continue declining. And in 2007, I had uh, a much longer list of vitamins and supplements uh, because of my functional medicine training now as well as my own research. Uh, and in uh, the fall, I decided that I should uh, use this long list of nutrients uh, to reorganize what I was eating uh, to maximize the intake of those key nutrients. Mm -hmm. And so I, uh, I took some more research to figure out where they were in the food supply, um, but I, I, I did. And at the very end of December, I had reorganized my diet, still following paleo principles, but now designed very specifically based on uh, my new understanding of the nutritional needs of the brain and of uh, the mitochondria. And that's really when the magic began. Within a month, uh, my fatigue was gone, my brain fog was uh, rapidly reducing. Uh, in three months, I was beginning to walk around uh, with a cane and then without a cane. Uh, at nine months, I got on my bike for the first time uh, in about five years and biked around the block. And then uh, at 12 months, I was able to do a 20-mile bike ride with my family. Now, this really transformed how I understood disease and health, and it would transform how I would practice medicine, and it would also transform uh, the focus of my research in that I now uh, focus on testing diet and lifestyle. Yeah, that's beautiful, and it aligns with my thoughts, but I come from the gardening point of view, and so it's like, I have a medical background, but I know what good vegetables can do for a person, and so for me, it's super exciting to hear, you know, the medical profession following that same path that I'm already on, so that's awesome. So um, can you tell me what your vision is for the future of the Walls Protocol? Uh, sure. Well, uh, the we're doing lots of things. So I'm uh, working. Uh, I get calls from people all over uh, the world, uh, uh, in from South Africa, uh, England, Australia, uh, even Dubai, uh, who are wanting to come see me. And I have to tell everyone that um, I have my only clinical practices at the VA where uh, all I do there now is run the therapeutic lifestyle clinic. I'm committed, though, to teaching the public. And so I, uh, we have some uh, in-person seminars that I will have where we uh, run. Uh, it, we'll have a course in uh, August. That'll be three days where I uh, teach these concepts and I teach people how to do a uh, timeline and a matrix and uh, help them conduct a functional medicine assessment on themselves so they understand uh, why and how diet and lifestyle created the health status that they have, and then help them design a plan to address that. So I, I'm working on, on teaching the public. Um, I am writing a new book, uh, The Walls Protocol Cooking for Life book, um, and uh, so uh, that's lots of fun and we're in the process of developing uh, some new recipes and new things to try there. Okay. Uh, and I'm um, also working on developing a curriculum to train uh, Walls Protocol coaches to help uh, people, uh, help others implement these concepts because uh, helping us adopt new health behaviors uh, it can can benefit often from a coaching relationship, uh, and we're also working on a curriculum for Walls Protocol practitioners, so I can teach more uh, physicians and chiropractors and naturopaths to approach health restoration uh, the way I do. 